Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Board Game Review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Mothership, and two expansions, Call of the Void and Into the Vortex. In the game Mothership, it's going to play two to six players. It takes about an hour or so to play, and it's for ages 13 and up, roughly. And it's going to be including these two little expansions here in the Kickstarter, where we're talking about not only the base game, but also what both expansions uh, have in store for you guys, everything that is going to be included in the game. I have a four-player copy, and I've played up to four players, but there is actually up to six players in the game, so just to give you an idea of that, it's quite a lot of components but the idea of the game is pretty simple it is a tactical miniatures game in space in which you're trying to defend your colony ship and destroy your opponent's colony ship or their all their ships if you can do that you're going to win the game there's two modes of play one in which you're just trying to defeat your opponents and the other way is by simply gathering victory points nevertheless it's an interesting little game and i will show you everything that comes included with the game Mothership down below right now. So here's Mothership as well as both of the expansions Call of the Void and Into the Vortex. I'm going to give you a full rundown of everything that you see here and then we're going to take you down below and I'll show you the setup and how a turn functions and then we're going to come up and do a review. So as you can see this is going to be the board of the game and it's just going to have a grid based system. There is a front and a back. One is a blue side like this and the other is a red side and then of course I just have the rule books for each of the different portions of the game. These are player reference cards that explain how a turn works and on your turn you're simply going to manage your energy of your mothership you're going to be able to move and attack but in order to move your mothership uh, you must first do your do your uh, managing energy first and of course spending minerals to gather certain things like cards and whatnot uh, then after that you're going to simply end your turn by gathering any resources from planets that you control you can sell action cards from your hand um, that you bought previously you started with and then you can also upgrade technology on these little tech trees here. All right, so let's go into all the different things that there are on the board here. Let's talk about these first. This here is going to be your mothership board, as well as uh, explanations for your stats for all your other ships, such as fighters, bombers, and your, of course, mothership and guardians. Guardians are like turrets in space. The, the fighter gets the attack on a d6, the bomber on a d8, and the mothership will attack based on its damaging capabilities, its cannons up here, which you're going to be able to set in the game. It also tells you what types of ships can fight what other types of ships and or planets, and um, uh, what it cannot damage when it can, as well as uh, basically your attack, your engine, and your hull or your shields here uh, for your mothership. The guardians are never going to move, and they can attack in, uh, fighters, bombers, the mothership's hull, and shield as well as guardians but they can't attack planets or colony stations it also tells you the cost of certain things that you can buy with minerals such as two action car or two action uh, two action two for an action card three for exploring a planet and gathering an artifact card one for building a guardian which are basically the turrets and a question mark for tech trees because tech trees are going to have their own certain costs this is your tech tree here there's four different types you're going to have basically a tech tree cube on each of these areas here which when you start you're going to start on these trees here and uh, as you progress through this track, you'll spend one for this one, two for this one, and then you'll choose either way for this. Uh, it'll cost you three for one of these, four for one of these, and five. And you have to have the previous ones, and you'll also get all the bonuses from the previous ones that you've bought. You can do that for all four of the different tech trees as you go throughout the game. You're not likely going to get everything uh, in any single game, so being able to choose your tech tree is going to be different every single time. This is the four different players I have, but it plays up to six. As you can see, you've got your mothership, which is their biggest miniature. You're going to have your bombers, which are your second biggest. And, uh, and then your, th uh, your third is going to be your fighters. The two other separate units are going to be your little turrets or your uh, guardians. And then your final one, which is technically your biggest, is going to be your colony ship. This one doesn't really move, though. And if it dies, you're out of the game. The other way you can lose is if all of your ships are dead and just your colony is left on its own. Uh, you're also going to get these little these little pieces here, which will allow you to gather planets and gas planets. Once you defeat them or obtain them in some way, you're going to simply put these on them, and you will gain them just like that. It's really easy how that works. You're also going to be able to utilize these little asteroid fields here. These asteroid fields are basically things that are going to hurt you if you go into them. 
unless you're lucky, then they, you can kind of dodge them and swoop them off. When you walk into them, you're going to be fighting them technically. And if you beat the, them in a fight, you're going to be able to move through them. If you don't, however, you're going to lose your ship. This is for a point scoring system in the game. If you want to play the point way variant, it'll tell you you start at zero and you gain points uh, in the game, whether you control planets or defeat your opponent's ships and or colonies. You'll go up this track and after a certain amount of points, you can win. That's the secondary version of the game, I suppose. These are your planets and your gas planets. These ones, if you capture them, will have artifacts underneath them that you can go ahead and pick up with minerals as well as they're going to generate you minerals. These ones are gas planets. They're going to generate you gas and they'll also have artifacts as well. These cards over here are basically planetary defense cards or cards that will help you um, make your planet better in some way. They're also going to give you influence when you buy them. There's a cost to them. One for the first one on your planet, two for the second one, and three for the third one. You'll be able to select up to, um, there's three of them you can select from on the field at any point in time. And you place them near the planet to symbolize what kind of bonuses they get. Sometimes they'll get defense bonuses and other times they're just going to give you certain resources for the cost of minerals. Then you've got these cards here. These are your artifact cards and they're numbered one through 12, along with these tokens here, which are your artifact tokens. They'll be hiding under planets. And when you capture that planet, you can see what it is, purchasing it for three minerals. And uh, then you're gonna take the corresponding card. And as long as you have that planet, you will be able to use a special ability for the game. If somebody else takes that planet though, they're gonna get this card. One example is a plus one on any roll against any enemy guardian cannons. Pretty useful, right? It's a VHS tape, and it's going to be number one. But there's a 12 other different ones, right? You're also going to have your die, which are going to be based on what you're going to be utilizing for attacking. And all the different ships have their own attacks, as well as the mothership. You can kind of set its attack how you would like, based on what you uh, how you utilize your tokens up here. You can attack it with a D2 all the way up to a D12. So you have a bunch of different dice to utilize there. Let's talk about the expansion stuff now too. Over here you have Call of the Void, in which you're gonna get beacon cards and beacon tokens. There's gonna to be an equal amount of tokens, half face up, half face down on the board, as well as this deck of cards that you'll shuffle. Whenever you get a face up token, you're gonna to get to draw a card and do what it says. It'll usually have two options or an objective that you can try and complete. Failure or success could mean in different things happening. When you unlock the other ones by simply removing the face ones off the board by walking on them, then those ones will flip over and then you can try and access new objective cards in the game. So interesting things can happen, like uh, dealing with a, uh, a, a prince of sorts that is trying to tell you he's very, very rich, and if you take him to this planet, he'll give you stuff. And if you don't manage to do that, then you're not going to get his special stuff, and you can determine if you want to do that objective or not. You'll also have objective cards from this expansion, where every player is going to get two of them secretly, and if you complete them, you'll reveal them and gain whatever resources or rewards they give you. In another variant as well is if you just simply want to play the worldwide objectives, where you'll place a couple of them face up, uh, as many as you'd like, I suppose, and then people can complete them at their will, and as they do, they'll gain the resources by removing them from the game. Basically, uh, hidden objectives are added to the game with this Call to the Void expansion. Uh, into the Vortex now, let's go ahead and talk about this stuff here. We have 10 class cards, which you can go ahead and give everybody one to start the game with, and they'll have special abilities. Like for instance, uh, let's pick the one I was playing with the most, which is going to be the Engineer. This guy here is going to let you do a defensive platform attack once in the game. It's for a D10, so you can just simply roll a D10 and hit something. Pretty cool. In addition, every time you roll a 1, you can re-roll that 1 uh, every time until you get something else pretty useful as well. All these characters, the inventor, the pirate, the tactician, the navigator, the politician, they all have their own unique passives and active abilities that you can use in the game. Wormholes. Wormholes are gonna be green, red, and blue. When you place them on the board, if you go from one wormhole to another, that will end your movement, but you can place your units anywhere on the outside uh, spaces, and uh, that will basically let you teleport from one portion of the map to the other. The other side of the wormhole is going to be black, and those are basically anywhere teleports. So if there's a black one on the board, and then you have a green, uh, two blue ones, on, or let's say two green ones on the board, uh, you could move one of your pieces from uh, here to any of these two spaces, whereas the green ones only go back and forth to each other. So you can choose to have, have, have that how you would like it. And there's three different colors. So maybe you don't want to add black ones. You don't have to do that if you don't want. Then you're going to have these nebula tiles here. Nebula tiles you can only walk into if you have at least half of your movement. And every time you walk from one space to another, it's going to eat up your movement. So these things are movement slowers in general, and they'll be placed around the board as well as you would like. The game is going to be very modular as to how you'd like to create the board and how you'd like to place everything. The 
final things to talk about are all of these tokens. Whether you have influence, which will basically determine um, the way you can stop players from doing certain things and whatnot. You'll have, you can use your influence to gather planets on the board, as well as telling players that they can't place turrets. Uh, you're also going to have, of course, your green, which is going to be your resources and or your minerals that you'll be using to buy stuff. These grays are going to be utilized for your tech trees. Everybody's going to get four to start on those four different trees. Then you're going to have these blue ones here, which you'll place on your mothership. These are the blue ones that are going to be placed up to here. You're going to start with 15 of these guys, and you can maneuver them how you want at the beginning of every turn, changing the way your mothership kind of functions. There are these red tokens here, which are going to be the life of your mothership and your colony ship, and you'll lose life with those things there. And then finally, you're going to have these orange, which are gas. And gas will let your turrets and your motherships gain plus one to their damages and their, their plus one to their rolls, basically, for attack and defense. Overall, though, that's pretty much everything in the game, and you probably have a good idea of how to play just by what I've explained, but let's take you down below, and I will show you how to play around or two. So here we have Mothership, and I went ahead and set up all the expanded content, as well as the base game, for two players. I figured it'd be easy just to show you how it kind of looks. Now, the first thing you need to know about setup is that all of these little uh, tokens here are going to be on the side for each of the different tracks. This is for green, red, blue, and uh, purple. They don't start on them, but once you pay for them, then you can place it on them, and then they can go up the track, and then choosing one of the two different tech trees. Over here, you're going to start with 15 of these blue pieces here. These are basically your customizable mothership pieces in which at the beginning of the game you can basically change these how you'd like them to be uh, maybe giving it more thruster and less damage or maybe giving it less damage and more shields or any of that in, in any of that you can do this is just a basic setup so it's going to give a the nicest array possible of five for each. Each player is also going to be getting two of these uh, basically objective cards here. Like I said previously, you can play with them uh, secretly face down, or if you wanted to, you can flip over a certain amount, and then players can play with the pool of objectives and complete them as they get as they get to. Additionally, the expanded content includes this little scientist guy. There's uh, everybody can choose their own unique character here that I went ahead and give this guy uh, this one right here. Uh, it's got a gravity manipulator and he's got radar. Ships can move a maximum of two spaces through the nebula. Oh, that's actually nice. Uh, that allows him to move a little faster through these little areas here. Uh, and of course, there's going to be these planet bonuses. I placed three of them here face up. And then, of course, the deck next to it. There are these cards here, which are going to be basically part of another expansion where when players walk over these pieces here, they're going to then draw this card and do something with them. Option one or two, they get to choose. This is the basic cards in the game in which you get to start with two of them, which he went ahead and did so. And you can gain these for a certain cost that tells you down below here. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it for your player boards and whatnot. Go ahead and take one of these little token, these little cards here. Explains the turn pretty well, and also explains some tips and whatnot that you can utilize while playing the game. Here is the board. If you're going to be playing with the point system, you'll be adding this thing here along with your stars right on the side here. And as you gain points for controlling planets or destroying certain ships, you'll move along this track here. We're not going to utilize this though, so I'm going to take this off of the board. Uh, but this is the setup. I went ahead and put all these tokens over here to the side, so as you can see, you're going to be probably utilizing these at some point throughout the game, and of course the artifacts. Every uh, thing on this board was put together how uh, we chose to do so, but you try and make it as balanced and fair as possible. We also put the motherships in the uh, spaces uh, that are pretty close to uh, the exact side, opposite sides of the board. We place the nebulas as well as these little asteroids, uh, basically to make sure that it's as, as close to um, fair as possible. We've got the wormholes here, uh, blue and of course green, and then our little uh, things here for the cards that you'll be going ahead and making choices for that are just on here. There's also two additional locked ones that are here that unlock when these guys get removed from the board. So that is a thing that can happen. And then, of course, planets. Make sure there's enough planets and there's the two gas planets that are in the middle here, along with two of these... Uh, these warps here that can go to the greens or to the blues here as well. Uh, and that's pretty much set up. You're going to set your mothership uh, next to your colony. So place the colony somewhere. And then everybody can place their ships two spaces away from their colony. So it's going to have a little cluster for every single player. As you can see, there's one and two spaces, one and two spaces. And that's the same for everybody as well. Once all of your ships are placed down, then you're ready to go. The board's set up. You can go ahead and select a first player 
player to start the game. To begin the game, you're going to go ahead and look at this action card here. It tells you everything you actually need to know. I'll make sure you place these guys under this planet here. All the planets get one of these things here for the artifact cards. But anyway, so during your turn, you can do this in any order of these three things. You can manage your energy, making this ship move in a certain way. So for instance, we're going to go ahead and use red here. And uh, maybe red, for instance, wants to... He placed, he didn't like his placement, but yeah, he placed there. So he probably wants to get to here, right? So he needs one, two, three, four, five spaces. So he's going to need five thrusters, which is okay. He probably won't need shields, though, because there's no way that this player is going to get to him that fast. So maybe he's going to try and increase his damage. So he'll go up to a D8. And then he's set. He's, he's programmed his mothership. That was one thing you can do. Managing your energy on your mothership will just change the different... Uh, boosters, attack, and defense, which is basically going to be your shields before you start taking whole damage. Also, don't forget that your mother ship is going to start with 12 health and your uh, calling ship will start with 16. Now, uh, the next phase is moving and then attacking or spending minerals. Uh, we don't have any minerals to start with the game, so we'll go ahead and move and attack. So maybe these guys want to go ahead and go one and two, and this player, one, two, three four oh this can go he can go he can go three so one two three four five uh it doesn't matter what orientation they are in now uh, this player can also go another three if he wants maybe he'll just go one two and then three warping him over here and then laying him place anywhere here so he'll go ahead and place right there and uh, don't forget that you have that there and then these guys can move four spaces so he can go one two three and four uh, one two three and four one two three and four now, I've moved everything because I cannot move my colony. So now I have the option to attack as well as I'm going to complete these. So I'll go ahead and complete this little guy here. I'm just going to simply take it off the board and draw one of these cards here. It's a pirate raid. It says the space pirate factions have taken advantage of the warring colonies and have abandoned, have banded together to sweep the galaxy in a wave of, <laughs> of pirating. So, okay, so let's see what it says. Uh, outcome, planet resources gathered at the end of every player's turn. Oh, so, okay, are half. So everybody gets half of their resources until the ne your next turn, or you can swap for the pirate class. So there's classes in the game that just because you are the scientist doesn't mean you might not change. So if you wanted to, you could either change to be a pirate with this card here, or you can make everybody lose ha have only get half of their resources during the resource phase until your next turn. It's a pretty good bonus. So we'll go ahead and do that. So players only get half resources other than ourselves. If we get rid of one more of these, these two will unlock, allowing us to get more of these cards here. Then, uh, of course, attacking. You're going to be able to attack this planet here. Bombers can only attack planets, and it tells you exactly right here. It says they can they can damage hull points, shields, planets, and guardians, but they can't hit fighters and bombers. So these guys cannot hit um, other ones of their type or these guys here. Uh, now they can attack. So this has got a shield of six. All planets have a shield of six. And we have a, a bomber, which is going to get eight. And then we're going to have a damage from the mothership, which is going to be a D8 as well. So we'll roll this twice and we can add them together. Whenever we attack the same target, we add them together. If we were attacking somebody and they attack back though, and they beat us, then they're actually going to wipe out all of our units. So you got to be careful in attacking together, even though it's a great bonus. So that's a three. And then our next one is an eight. That's going to be 11. In which case, we've now controlled this planet. We can place one of our tokens underneath this guy here. And then we have this artifact, which if we want to pay three minerals for, we can go ahead and flip that over and search the uh, artifact deck and gather whatever it is that'll give us a bonus while we have it. That would be pretty much our turn. Uh, after that, we're going to go ahead and gather any resources. Gas planets will give us a gas. Our colony is always going to give us one mineral. And any planets we have will give us a mineral as well. So in this case right now, we are going to have two minerals. So we'll take two of these green minerals here and we can put anywhere we want to remind us that we have minerals. And then we can go ahead and sell any action cards we want. These cards can also be played on other people's turns if there's a shield there. If not, you can go ahead and sell them for their sell cost right up here. We'll go ahead and save these for now. And then we can upgrade our tech tree. Like I said before, there's a cost to these tech trees. So I could spend one and one and gain these two techs or I could just spend one and wait for my next turn to spend another two on this one. They all do different things. So space walls will give greater planet defense. This one here is going to win ties in combat, plus one to your bomber rolls. This will let us play our, 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 our uh, guardians. So in this case, if I wanted to, I could spend one resource or one mineral and remove it back to the pile. And then on our next turn, we can actually go ahead and place these next to one of our, our guys, which is pretty useful. It just It's a stationary turret. Pretty cool. So we'll go ahead and uh, buy that one upgrade. So now we have that. 
Then, after that, we're done. That's the end of our turn. The other player's going to take his turn. Maybe he'll move around the board in some way. We'll just go ahead and move the tokens around. Perhaps he... Oops, this guy stays. Let's go ahead and say that he actually even captured this as well. So he would actually put his little token on as well. Don't forget there's the artifact there. And uh, let's just say he ended just like that. And then we go back to our turn. And we continue playing the game. Uh, another fight scene. So for instance, if we came up like this and we decided to fight this guy here, you have to be around him. That's the, there, there is no additional space in combat. You have to be around the target. In this case, we could roll both of our die, which is a d6 for each. We get a three and a five, that's eight. And then this player here, he get to roll his defense as well, or his attack as well, and he would have a three, so our eight versus his three would destroy him fairly easily, right? Um, and that's basically how combat works. You're gonna take out your units, take out the units that you defeat, and you're trying to destroy all your enemy units. Now, of course, there's rules to what you can and cannot do damage with. These guys, this guy couldn't hit these guys here, but he does hit planets and he does hit these turrets here. Could also have placed a turret out like this. And as you can see, uh, turrets cannot damage planets or colony stations, but they can hit this. So after I attack this guy here, I could place one of these guys out. And then with my D6 attack, I could try and take out this guy as well. So he'd roll, this is a three, and then he's going to go ahead and roll his D8. A seven, which is gonna wipe out our turret. No! So that is basically how combat works. Uh, the only other difference in combat is when you're fighting against motherships. So for instance, if I had this bomber here, and this was this mothership and I was attacking it, uh, in general, you're gonna have to defeat shields. And uh, specifically these type of units here, if they were working together, he would only be able to nuke his shields. And this is the shields of the character. When you take out a mothership shield, you're gonna remove these tokens from it. And then what's ever left is gonna be whole damage. So if he rolls his D8 and does eight damage, he will actually nuke eight damage from the ship. And that is how you can defeat the mothership. It's pretty difficult to do so. The same holds true for a colony. So for instance, if he was here and it was his turn, uh, this colony has 16 health. He would actually roll the die based on how strong it was. Maybe he was a, let's say he was a D10. He'd roll that and he'd do three damage. Three is not enough to hurt a mothership, in which case it would need to be at least four. So for instance, if he did seven, he would go down, it would go down to 12. So if it did eight, then it would go down to eight. So you have to do at least um, four amounts of four. And that's kind of how damaging the, uh, the colony ship works. If you can nuke the colony ship all the way to zero health, you win, or defeating all of your opponent's units other than the uh, colony ship, you also you can win that way as well. Let's go ahead and take a note of a couple other things too. Uh, let's say that he had, uh, he had enough minerals to go ahead and purchase this. He'd flip this over, it says number 12. He'd go ahead and look at the artifact, look for number 12. And then he's going to put that with him. If this ever is captured by the blue player, this will get stolen. But from now on, plus two to all, uh, uh, plus two on all mothership rolls. So mothership is always going to get plus two on their rolls. Really, really, really powerful, right? Pretty good. As long as he has this planet, his mothership is going to be very, very useful. Um, you're also going to have chances to get new, unique, different uh, characters to switch back and forth with based on these things here. Uh, and uh, you already saw the warp tiles. These guys here is another thing. If you go through here and you walk into one of these space tiles here, or these uh, asteroid tiles, the asteroid is actually going to attack you with a D6. And then you are going to have to roll a D6 with this character here. And if you do not beat it, you die. But if you successfully do, you're okay, and you can go in this asteroid field and, until you want to exit. Once you exit, though, and come back in, you'll have to roll a d6 again to see if you die. So that is how these guys work. And these guys you can walk into, so he has a movement of four. Uh, he can simply walk into it uh, because he has at least half movement left. If he was here, uh, and or here, and he did one, two, three, he could not walk in here because he did not have half of his movement left. And that's how nebulas work. They let you go from one space to another for a full movement and half of your movement to walk into a nebula. They're slowing, but they don't kill you. So that's pretty useful, right? And that's pretty much how you play the game. There's a lot of different things in the game. You're going to be utilizing these reward tiers as you accomplish the goals here. When you capture a planet, you can spend minerals to place these things down on them. That'll cost you one mineral. That'll cost you two. and That'll cost you three for a total of six. And you can only have three max on a planet. But these will give you certain things like... Uh, like uh, these these little purple things here, influence, that will allow you to capture other planets and stop players from placing down turrets. And all planets can have three of these out. They give different bonuses and whatnot, which is pretty useful. You can pay, pay for cards for two minerals apiece, put these in your hand, and that'd be a worthwhile trade. 
And uh, you can go ahead and utilize them either on your turn or if it has a shield on other people's turns. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. You're going to be playing the game throughout until somebody's victory con condition is met. And the last thing to note, too, is if you want to, you can use two separate boards. And these wormholes can connect those boards. And you can play with more and more players. There really is no limit to the amount of players I guess you could play on this game. So you could have a huge, huge battle in Mothership if you wanted. But that's the game. All right, let me tell you what I think about it. All right, a couple caveats now before we get into the review. First thing is gas. I explained how you get it, but not what it does. Gas is going to let you, oh, it's orange by the way, is going to let you get plus one to your attack or defense rolls on your mothership or on your turrets or guardians, if you want to call them that. Uh, so playing up to four of them, I believe, will give you a plus four to your attack or defense rolls, which is pretty, pretty useful if you ask me. Uh, the other one is influence. I explain what they do, but now how much things cost. Well, the first thing you can do is you can discard two influence to refresh the green face-up cards with new ones. You can spend influence to remove other players' influence based on a one-to-one -one basis. You can spend influence based on a planet's defense, which starts at six, but could increase based on the cards played on them, to just simply take them over. And uh, you can also spend influence for one other thing. Oh, and stopping turrets. <laughs> two is going to take you two to stop a turret from being played by a single ship, but it's just going to stop that one ship from placing the turret. Another ship can go ahead and place that they want instead. And there's those are basically the four actions you can do with uh, the influence. Pretty useful though. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything I have to say on Mothership as to how to play it and how it functions. I hope you get a good idea of how the game works. Now let's talk about what I think about the game. This is a tactical space combat game. The more players, the better. In a two-player game, it's fine, but it can have the snowballing effect like most uh, tactical games can have. And in a four or five player game, it starts getting pretty insane. Now we play this up to four players due to the amount of players I have to show you, but it can play up to six, which I think is even better. Uh, at four players, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of condensed fun in which stuff is happening. It's not a long game, actually. It's pretty quick because it's you're, it's over once all you have left is the colony ship and your ships will instantly die. They can't be removed or they can't come back into the game unless you're playing the point system and after you start gaining more and more control you start building more and more and more power and you get to take over those plants and whatnot it has that feeling of space combat and serious repercussions for failing a space combat objective so you have to make sure when you move your pieces where everybody else is going to move afterwards and you also have to realize that that mothership can change real easily on a dime you might not think that somebody can get to you and they can with that mothership for the most part you leave your colony ship undefended in a more in a, in a, a more than a two-player game, you're also going to have some trouble. You need to make sure that you build your defenses and your offenses correctly, moving around to gather as many planets as you can, choosing the right um, places to use mineral, like do you want to move that tech tree or do you want to add more reinforcements to your planets? There's a lot of choices in this game that makes it a lot of fun. All in all, it's a basic tactics style game. You're going to have the basic ideas of warp tiles and moving around units and there's certain places you can walk on and can't walk on and uh, taking damage on certain areas and whatnot. But what makes it very unique as well is all the pieces are kind of hovering above each other. It does have that tactical space feel with it with the planets and whatnot. I really like that. And also all the different types of things that can be added to the game just feel like one big game. All it does is make it thicker. It doesn't feel like the expansions are like something completely separate. It just adds more to it. You're not going to use a lot of the cards from a lot of the expansions. All these cards here are basically those different option cards. It's a nice added card, uh, a nice added card aspect to the game in which there's not a lot, it's not going to happen often, but when it does, it'll have some great story aspects to the game. And a lot of them are really funny. You have like coin flip, right? <laughs> and even reading, not reading all this text, you can just read the options and it's like, I don't know, heads, I guess, or I don't know, tails, I guess. And then you get rewards based on those choices. It's good. I, I really like this aspect of the game. Um, also, I like the different action cards and how you can utilize them, and they are very valuable. Uh, they have a lot of different aspects. Um, there's, there's just a ton of different cards that come with this. You can repair your mother ship. You can gain shields. You can prevent one damage from a ship. Uh, you can go through nebulas. You can dodge asteroids, stopping other cards. Just a ton of different things that can be utilized. Throwing in those objectives is a nice little twist, too. It makes you not want to 
maybe you don't want to move your tech tree all that up because if you do you're gonna not be able to get your objective and your objectives can give you valuable points i also like the aspect of just having them out and everybody can go ahead and get those so you know what everybody's going for and you can try and stop them along the way the added player characters that give you very very uh, a variant of a different action you can take or different passive abilities is excellent as well everything here just feels flushed in it feels really good we actually just jumped in from mothership with the expansion we just played it all the first game and tried it out and it all made sense it all worked there was no actual issues i had with the games in, in particular uh the only thing i can say that might be a negative is playing a two-player game it's very likely as you start losing ships and the other player doesn't because there is dice roll in this there is luck as far as rolling these die uh, most tactics games don't use as much die roll this this one does use enough die roll because you're basically going to be rolling for capturing planets and going through asteroid belts and destroying other characters that there is a there's a luck aspect involved the idea is mitigating that luck Utili utilizing your mothership's ability to maneuver their pieces around to try and give you more shields or more tech or more defense playing your cards that you gather in your hand utilizing your resources to improve your tech tree it all mitigates that luck which is a nice aspect for those of you that are specifically non-luck oriented tactical gamers this might not be for you but even still you might be interested just because of how much mitigation there is involved in this game for those of you who like a really no holds barred scary like combat style game in which every move counts you're really going to enjoy this one because it has a lot going for it specifically that way the points way is also very fun as well overall this is a good tactical game it's a game i definitely play with more players i'm so i'm solidifying this at three four and probably more as for how I'd want to play the game. In two-player, it's okay, but I like that added chaos when you add extra players into the game. Overall, a solid game. Really enjoyed the game Mothership and both of the expansions. I'm excited to see what other Kickstarter stuff they have included. I saw some stuff on the rules that involved things I may or may not be able to talk about, but I'm excited to see those added as well to the game. More is always better with these kind of games for me. Overall, Mothership approved. Seal of approval all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this video go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe comment please as well as hit that bell notification button it does help we do greatly appreciate it and don't forget to check out mothership along with the expansions to the game currently on kickstarter in the description below you can go and see what they're doing down there it's a fun tactical game i'm sure you tactics players are going to like it as long as you don't mind a little bit of dice rolling as well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We got a ton of great stuff going on there. And I'm always excited to show you the new giveaways we got going on right now. It's Wingspan. And don't forget to check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and The Giveaway Geek. Two great sites, two great sites full of giveaways, even more than my own site. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. As always, I look forward to destroying your mothership next time.